Now, what I wanted to do was to use superposition to solve maybe a very simple network and I just want to give it as an example to make sure everybody understands how to use this and I am going to choose something very simple uh, without using the simplifications you know of resistors in series with current sources or in parallel with voltage sources. But let us say I take uh, a very simple network. So, I am going to choose some network like this. and I want to use both current sources and voltage sources. So, I am going to say that this is a current source of value let us say i, this is a voltage source of value v and let us say um, this was r 1 and r 2. So, in fact, now let us give numbers because that always makes things easier to understand. So, let us say the current source was a 1 ampere current source and may, maybe 1 ampere is too much let us make them make the current in milliamperes. So, let us say this is a milliampere because we studied batteries where the current was drawn in terms of milliamperes. So, let us say that the current is 1 milliampere and let us say the voltage source value was um, let us say 2 volts and I am going to make these resistors in kilo ohms. I will just take simple values which will make things easier for me. Uh, maybe I should make one of these different. So, what I will do, I will maybe let us make them 2 kilo ohms and 4 kilo ohms. Let us make things easier for us. I want to find out the current through the 4 kilo ohm resistor. So, this is my question. I have this network a 2 volt battery, 2 kilo ohm resistor, 4 kilo ohm resistor and a 1 milliamp current source connected in this fashion. I want to find out the current through the 4 kilo ohm resistor. Now, I hope all of you recognize that I have a fully resistive network. This is a fully linear network therefore, I can use superposition. So, which two voltage sources will I superpose? I will superpose this voltage source and this current source. And I would take them one by one, solve the network and find out the total current as the sum of the two cases. So, let us do it systematically. I am going to take this voltage source first. So, I am going to split this as two sources. So, I am first going to de-energize the current source, 1 milliamp current source and what do you do when you de-energize the 1 milliamp current source, you open circuit the current source. I am going to energize only the voltage source, I have 2 kilo ohms and I have the 4 kilo ohm resistor. I am going to call this current I x 1, this is case 1. What is the current through the resistance? 4 kilo ohm resistance I x 1 I hope all of you can see is nothing but 2 volts over the sum of the two resistances. You simply have to apply mesh analysis as you start from here and come back here. So, you can see that the current through the 4 kilo ohm resistor is nothing but 2 volts over 2 kilo ohms plus 4 kilo ohms this is nothing but uh, 2 by 6 which is 1 by 3 milliamperes. So, this current I x 1 is nothing but 1 by 3 milliamperes. Now, I am going to consider case 2. In case 2 only the 1 milliampere current source, 1 milliampere source is energized. So, what happens to the 2 volt voltage source? Well, you remember that you have to short circuit the 2 volt voltage source. And now, I apply only the 1 amp 1 milliamp current source. Now, 
I am interested in this current, I am going to call it I x 2. What is the value of I x 2? Well, the value of I x 2 is simply, we can now use the identity that we have learnt before. So, let us go back a few pages. We saw that <coughs> if you have a current source feeding into two combination of two resistors in parallel, the current through one resistance is the other resistance over the sum of the resistors. So, let us use that here, I think we can use that here. I am interested in the current through the 4 kilo ohm resistor. So, that has to be the 2 kilo ohm resistor over 2 kilo ohms plus 4 kilo ohms times the actual current which is 1 milli ampere. So, this current is nothing but uh, again it is 2 by 6 which is 1 by 3 milli amperes. Now, is the time to apply superposition. So, the actual current is I x 1 plus I x 2 which is nothing but 1 by 3 milli amperes plus 1 by 3 milli amperes or 2 by 3 milli amperes. Now, you are also welcome to solve the network in one go with the voltage source and current source by applying mesh analysis or nodal analysis and figure out whether you get the same answer. And some of you may be wondering, since the two currents are the same, suppose I were to take the same network. So, I will call this 2 kilo ohms and 4 kilo ohms and I take this 2 volt voltage source except what I am going to do, I am going to change the direction of the current source and I am going to make this 1 milli ampere in this direction. Your question may be, will this actually cause a 1 third milli ampere in one direction and a one third milli ampere in the other direction. Because I got equal currents, this question might arise in your minds and I am going to give that as a homework. I am going to ask you to think about what will happen if, if you reverse the direction of the current source. So, this is practice problem 1 and in fact, the second practice problem I am going to give you is to do the following case. I am going to take the same network, I am going to connect the current source in the original fashion which is upwards What I am going to do, I am going to reverse the direction of the 2 volt voltage source and in both cases we want to find out this current. So, this would be practice problem number 2. Please think about what value of current will flow through the 4 kilo ohm resistor in these two cases. You can do it using superposition, you can do it using solving full blown network analysis because this network is a circuit is quite simple, but please practice with these two problems and compare with the answers you got in this case. See you next class.